Hello, welcome to Genomi Stitch Club UK for March. My name is Julia and I'm one of the educators for Genomi here in the UK and I run the Stitch Club and every month I try to go through some different techniques, different feet, etc. Some of the stitches, we take a look at all the different features on your machines so that you can maybe get the best out of it and if you've got any questions I am live in the comments tonight and if you're watching on catch up don't worry you can still ask questions put them in the comments because I do always check and get back to you okay so this month I don't know about you but if you were lucky enough to get some um, Mother's Day chocolates you may well I, I have three children by the way hence <laughs> why I've got so many um, but you may well have had some ribbon that was decorating your box of chocolates and if you're anything like me that ribbon of course will have gone into your sewing room because I can't resist a little bit of a ribbon or trim or anything like that um, so I thought that this month it might be quite good fun to have a look at some of the decorative stitches and how they look when you actually stitch them over ribbon because you can get some really really lovely effects when you're doing stuff like this so that um, for dressmaking and decorative work we're approaching summer well hopefully we're approaching summer so it was nice to look at a few ways where we can just sort of jazz up those little summer shirts and tops and skirts and dresses and the ideal way is looking at some of those stitches that you might have on your machine that you've never actually used before um, because they do look really really lovely uh, for this kind of technique so if however you don't want to go into full dressmaking mode quite yet uh, I have just done there's a very quick little project to do some Easter cards at the end where I've just literally been playing around with scraps um, which you could do as bunting as well but anyway I just thought that was a nice quick little project if you just wanted to have a little play with these stitches so I'm going to also look at a couple of feet which will help you with these techniques so we've got the ribbon and sequin foot and also this one the ribbon sewing guide which is a, a new one to me it's not long been in my sewing room so I've really enjoyed having a little play with that so why don't we turn around to the machine and get on with it so I quickly wanted to go through because I did say there were a couple of feet that could help with this task. The ribbon sewing guide. Um, I've only just recently had this to play with. So I'm still sort of on a learning curve with it, shall we say. Um, when you get it out of the packet and you go, oh my goodness me, uh, you get the plate and then you get two little rubber pads and two screws. Now, depending on how your layout is on here of your machine and it does tell you on the back where the little screw hole is and you've got a few attachments that you can use here sometimes um, and again we'll go through those uh, in other stitch clubs as we go along but it will tell you on the back there's also more information if you actually open up the card there's more information about how to use it in here but I just quickly wanted to go through so my machine here which is the Atelier um, I need and I know that because it tells me on that bit of card I need the slightly thinner pad can you see there's a thick one and a thin one and the shorter screw okay so this is basically going to find that hole there okay and I also because it tells me on the card know that I need to go through the longer slot here slot two so basically I just go in have a little fiddle around until I find the hole and then I'm just going to gently screw it. I'm not going to screw it completely tight because I now need to before I tighten it I'm going to untighten these two little screws here because these are where the ribbon sits I'm going to take it to its widest setting okay which is an inch okay now you've got a red line 
here, oh, machine's gone to sleep, so it's turned the light out. You've got a red line here, and the point is you need to line that up with, hang on, let me get my screwdriver, line that up with the red mark here because this is the center so obviously we want to the whole point of this foot is to help to keep us central so i am just going to shift this back until i'm in the center position and then tighten this screw up okay and then if i'm putting in let's have a little look so say for example I'm putting in inch wide, which I've got here. And as you can see, that, that fits nice and snug. I'm gonna just keep sliding out. And then you can just close this up and then tighten those screws because this is going to help you feed it through straight. Now, the thing that I have found so far, and as I say, I haven't had this for very long, so I will play with it and see what else um, I can do with it but the thing that I found it most helpful for is I particularly like stitching the lettering onto ribbon and then I've got the ribbon that I can use I use it if I'm doing things with um, the grandchildren or if I'm doing um, classes particularly with beginners or kids where they're on machines that don't have many fancy stitches but sometimes it's nice to be able to make them labels to put on their work afterwards um labeling brilliant and as i say very often with this it's quite difficult to actually keep it on the straight and narrow because when you're doing the lettering things kind of wiggle around because there's a lot of toing and froing the other thing that i always use when i'm doing lettering is just some interfacing and i usually use something like stitch and tear underneath i've got um a, a jar and here is a aforementioned jar other jars are available obviously um where i've just got strips of this already cut ready for whenever i want to do anything like this any labels or lettering so that i want to slide underneath my ribbon okay so the ribbon is going in the top here but this isn't this is just gonna sit underneath i don't generally use iron on don't think it needs it it's basically just to give your stitching better definition as you stitch on it so i'm just going to push that through lower my foot now i'm looking at that and thinking i haven't quite got that as I think I'm because I'm at a bit of an angle because of the camera so it may well not be as straight as it would be if I didn't have a camera between me, me and the sewing machine but that's better okay so if I just go into my um, lettering and just put in I've been doing what I've been doing well, I've been doing the Easter card, so I could do something like that. Um, the other thing it's really good for, and actually I'm going to do that, is uh, labels. If, if you do have children at school and you need to be doing labels. So I'm just going to do a couple of labels for my granddaughter, I think. She could never have too many labels. And because I can and because I've got it on the sewing machine, I'm going to also <laughs> go back into my decorative stitches quickly. I'll put pictures up in the side of um, the stitches that I'm doing here. Okay, because I'm going to go, I'm going into my pictograph because I know for certain that there's an elephant there. And I'm going to put that on the end in the vain hope that um, she might actually remember to bring home her school jumpers. I realise that is that is a very, very vain hope. But anyway, we'll try. OK, so I'm going to start stitching out. And as you can see, it is quite a thick ribbon. So it's wider than um, the ribbon and sequin foot will take. 
think showing you the two is quite good because you might find that one actually uh, is better better for the sort of thing that you do than the other. Now I'm on a I'm trying to think the ribbon. It's a grow grain sort of taffetary grow grain ribbon here. I should have put more gaps in between, but anyway, I'll put some bonder web on the back because uh, a mother probably won't sew these in. <laughs> That'll be left to Nanny. No hand sewing involved. She does machine sewing, but no hand sewing involved. Right, I'm going to press my lock off so that it finishes at the end of that elephant, just so we've got a couple to show you. There we go. Okay, so like I say, it's kept it really nice and central there. I should have put much more of a gap, shouldn't I? So I'll put some gaps and then stitch the rest out. But as I say, this on the back, I can then just snip away or tear away, doesn't matter, um, so that I haven't got that all along. Not for a school label, but generally with lettering. And again, we will come back to lettering time and time again. I would normally come in and get rid of all these little jumps in between. So it just looks, it looks much better and takes time. But on school labels, I don't know that I would actually <laughs> be bothered to do that, to be honest. Um, but like I said, I just wanted to quickly show you how that foot actually goes on because it is quite a, quite a, a big old chunk there and I think when you take it out of the packet that might be a little bit confusing. The um, the ribbon and sequin sewing foot is much simpler in comparison but like I said if we look at it here the ribbons that you can use are narrower so nine millimeter which is this bottom one here um, let me find if I've got I think this tape is nine millimeters this one here you can feed there's there's a seven a three and a two no that's slightly wider isn't it I think this is what I was looking at because I was looking through all my ribbons trying to find the ones oh, hang on it's use are narrower so nine millimeter which is this bottom one here um, let me find if I've got I think this white one there the ones that were the Right, there we go. So that one there, look, goes in. And this foot, a bit like all your others, you've got the bar here. So you just drop it down onto there and you are ready. So this one's quicker to put on, but like I say, the, the width, the maximum width isn't quite so, so wide. Um, and then that just feeds through and you hold it in place. OK, having played with the two of them, I must say I am preferring the uh, one with the plate, partly because you can do that that wider. And as I say, I do like being able to do the lettering um, nice and straight. But also if I was doing something through the center like a, a i've done it here for example i'll show you how i did this because i did actually do this one without the foot but if i was going to do a stitch through the center there i could do it on a much wider ribbon so that all of the stitching i could do three actual different stitches on here couldn't i um i'll finish a little sample and again put that in a picture on the side so those are the sort of specialist feet. But now let's look at how you do it if you haven't got those at the moment. Now I want to have a look at, at playing around with putting more than one stitch over the ribbon as well. So what I've done here, and this is what I'm saying, if you don't have any specialist feet, the feet that you will more than likely, well, you will definitely have this one because just about every machine has it. It's the satin stitch foot, the F foot. 
and this is the one that has got that sort of uh i don't know if you can see it there the actual sort of divot in between so it's really good for these decorative stitches because it just glides over the top you may also have the f2 which is the kind of open toe version of this that i've used before in lots of these videos i like this one because it gives me a nice clear view um, similar to the applique foot as well but sometimes I want to see exactly what's happening as I'm approaching so either of these two will work this one and I'll, I'll show you in a minute I'm going to start with this one actually um, show you my why you might want to use the, the different ones so on here uh, and this is one thing that I do think is worth doing I'm working on linen now as you can see it's a terribly neat sample because I am trying to keep things <laughs> neat and tidy I have put some interfacing on the back now if I was working on an actual garment I would be using something like stitch and tear I've spray starched it as well I mean you could just spray starch it to, to death I often do that with linen because it just stops it shifting and moving while you're doing this sort of work these sort of stitches on it and then obviously it will all just wash away afterwards so it's well worth putting something on here but I've done this just because as I always say when you're doing this fancy stitching they always do their best the machine does its best quality of stitching when it can really get its teeth into it so a single layer of um, cottony fabric lightweight cotton is not usually enough so for example if I was doing it on a cotton lawn or something I would definitely put something behind it but as I say I would want something that I can then remove afterwards because I don't want it to make the actual garment stiff so what I've got on here and this is one of those things as i'm talking you can see i'm trying desperately to get there we go get into it this is wash away quilters tape okay it's a double-sided tape and it will then wash away so you can put it on you peel off the top and there it is you can then stick on whatever you want stitch it and then it will disappear in the first wash okay so this is a really useful item i know it's one of those that they call it quilters but actually if uh, you're doing zips on um you know slinky fabrics holding the zip in place even to baste it this this is actually quite a good product so it's just one of those things that's really useful to have in your sewing box and then i can literally just stick my ribbon <coughs> excuse me stick my ribbon over the top there ready to do my fancy stitching so while i'm fiddling around let me get in i i mean i've got some nails here but even then you can't get there we go okay so it does just give you like i say the best chance of keeping things on the straight and narrow right so I've put in a blue thread. I've got bobbin fill in the bottom, actually, and I've got a blue thread in the top. Now, if I bring you in much closer, there we go, so that you can see exactly where I'm positioning. So this ribbon, which is the nine millimeter, as you can see, fits really snug in that gap there so that is going to make it nice and easy for me to actually um, see exactly what I'm I'm doing and keep it straight okay so I'm going to then go and have a little look through the stitches and at this point just do yourself some samples and go for it because there are so many nice stitches and some that you might not have even looked at and thought well I don't know what on earth I would do with any of those so as I say go and have a little look and see there's um I know what I'm going to do I'm going to find there's a flower it's a really nice flower there we go so pictograph 
I'll put a couple of pictures up of various things. Now, because this is a nine mil machine, oh look, here we go, just about to start. I've already managed to unthread it. Um, this is a nine mil machine. The stitch has come up to be nine mil. I'm going to take it down slightly because I want it to sit in the middle, not right up to the edge here. So I'm going to take it down to seven. Okay, there we go. And then I'm just going to stitch that through the center. And like I say, I'm keeping that in line. So nice and easy to eyeball it. This is actually a single faced satin ribbon, but I'm actually stitching it on the wrong side because I didn't want the shiny side. Um, I wouldn't recommend, because I have done it, like I say, I've been messing around with all sorts and I did do a double, a double faced satin ribbon. Don't recommend that because that was just slip sliding, regardless of what foot and whatever I used. Um, it's quite thick. And, and quite honestly, you don't need it to be double-sided for this job, so a bit of a waste really. So, Okay, so we are at the end, aren't we? There we go. So, perfect. All the way through the centre. And as I say, by the time all of this interfacing and everything else comes off, um, can I do that? I say it's, I did. Yeah, look. Go in and start tearing that away, and you can see. Look, we'll get that. Start to get that softness back in the fabric, and as I say, that st that uh, double sided tape will also come off in the wash so again it's going to free that up so it's got a lot better nice nice and movement um i shouldn't have done that before i do the next <laughs> next bit however on this one what i want to do is show you how to do two stitches across the ribbon so i'm going to do something slightly different let's go back and find something else so i'm going to look at one of my longer stitches and again i might i might take that down no i'm going to leave that actually as it is so it's just one of the flowery stitches um, and this time i'm lining it up look on the edge here because i'm going to do it both sides of the ribbon so that the ribbon is actually in the middle I've literally just picked this stitch it's probably not there might be nicer ones I'm gonna definitely show you all the different samples of things that I've done so so look we're going along the side there and then I can go back in, turn it round and now go down the other side. I think something a bit denser would look good, wouldn't it? I need to concentrate on what I'm doing. But you can see with this stitch, this is harder to keep straight because it's a lot of toing and froing. So look, we've got that stitch there. Now I'm going to go back to my, uh, I tell you what, I'm going to find there's a little French knot stitch and it's in the quilting. So let's find that one. And I'm going to line up in the middle and I'm going to start because I'm really hoping. <laughs> I'm 
threaded. Oh, now there we go. Go to the back. Okay. Um, yeah, so this is quite a little diddy, diddy star. It's not a very big one. I'm sticking to blue, but like I say, I'll do some samples where I mix up the colours a little bit. So look, it's now starting to get really fancy on there, isn't it? Um, here's one. Look, I've done that flower in the centre. I used the ribbon guide for this one so that I could make sure it was in the centre. And then I've just done this little one either side. And as I say, if I'd done different colours, you can really play with your colours, can't you? So I've changed this over and I've stitched out this, this leaf on here. I did it at 9mm so it goes the full width of the ribbon that I'm using. And what I'm putting over the top here is this little French knot. I, there's a few different stitches. So this is in the decorative stitches and it's stitch number 5. But what I've done is I've just lengthened the stitch and if you can on your machine not all machines will let you lengthen some of these decorative stitches but my atelier will I've taken it up so that I'm spreading it out so that if you see there's a sort of a bigger gap in between them because I'm just trying to make it look a little bit like the sort of a little flower in amongst the leaves really so I've used that contrasting colour and this is what I mean about plating, so I can write down exactly what I've done here on this sample. So I don't necessarily have to do this stitch over ribbon. But look, so now we're getting some really interesting um, braids going, aren't we? Uh, that's a variegated thread as well, which is quite nice isn't it so now I've swapped it out for that inch ribbon but look can you see I've moved the foot over here so I'm on nine millimeters I'm on one of my heirloom stitches I'll put the little picture up in the side so you can see which one it's like diamonds And I think as you stitch these stitches out, you'll start to see, uh, I, know, I, I know this is something I repeat constantly, but you'll start to see where you could actually use them. Mending, visible mending so if you've got issues going on and it's quite a big uh, mend that you need to do then you can stabilize it behind and then just fill it in with these sorts of stitches so I've got those now going on there so I could I'm not going to because I'm lining it up now so I'm going to follow this line down here and I'm going to put in something different, something a bit. Um, so I'm going to go quickly into my quilt stitches and one of the actual star stitches. But again, I could do a different colour, which then adds a little bit of interest. I don't think I've kept that very straight because of the camera position but I've got the whole strip done. I'm liking this one a lot actually. I think 
that would look really, really cute around the bottom of a, a little skirt or something for summer. So look, you can see we can just keep on going and filling these up, can't we, with all kinds of building up the stitches. So I've just changed this stitch out because I've got a little sailing boat on my machine. But what I've done, and I'll show you the screenshot in the corner, is I've put a gap in between each boat. Could have put two gaps, actually. And I'm going to the top. This is slightly wider ribbon, 12 mil, I think so that my nine mil stitch is sitting at the top here because I'm then gonna change, I've got navy thread, I'm gonna change that out. So I've put in a variegated thread and I've put on this, um, this little wave stitch. I've taken it down slightly so that I don't go over my boots and I'm judging it here. So it's just coming slightly off the ribbon on the underside. That's gonna give me a little, just a nice little wave going on underneath. It's be quite cute, wouldn't it, on a little boy's shirt the top of the pocket or something. So there we go. So I think you can see um, and these are just the ones that I've done while I'm filming today but as I say I will put a few pictures up round about of various other ones and then let me know what you come up with as well because uh, it's definitely worth doing a whole pile of little uh, sample pieces and then just seeing exactly what you can come up with because some of these stitches you know you put them together and then you start adding other things in going to give you some really interesting effects and I am definitely thinking summertime sleeves um, statement collars statement sleeves skirt borders things like that um like i say tops of pockets or whatever uh, if you can't find a trim make it that's the answer isn't it always one other discovery on the ribbon and sequin foot is this this is my favorite elastic for and um, cuffs and things like that so i thought i would give it a go because that's sometimes tricky isn't it to to keep that on the straight and narrow so I pop that in I just want to get the needle down Ooh, what stitch am I on still on a fancy one I think because that's what I wanted to look at actually was maybe one of the fancier stitches um when I was talking about doing stretch fabrics, there are in your heirloom section, you've normally got a few stitches that I would term as um, stitches that you'd use for things like uh, smocking. So I was thinking, hmm, OK, well, how about a little bit of pretty smocking? That would be rather nice, wouldn't it? So I'm going into my heirloom section. I've got my elastic there and I'm kind of holding it down. So I've gone into one of those heirloom stitches. It's pretty wide, so I'm going to bring it down a little bit because this elastic isn't terribly wide. Okay. And start stitching. That's it. So once it's anchored, I can then pull Pull the elastic you can see can't you that I'm I'm pulling it and I'm still lifting it up slightly in that guide 
as I go along. And then as soon as I can get to the back, I can start easing it through as well. There we go. And then just check what it's doing on the, the front as well. Okay. So this is what it's going to look like on the underneath. So you can see that, like I say, kind of smocking stitch. But look how pretty that is. That's nice, isn't it? Especially if it's just because, you know, a cuff, you don't necessarily have to have that particularly tight. In fact, you wouldn't really want it very tight, would you? But nice to be able to do something so it's just a little bit more interesting. I would have said and in actual fact you know nothing to say that you couldn't because shearing is is big at the moment but why not use that layer after layer so that you could build up an actual smocked top to a dress rather than necessarily using shearing so like I said I just wanted to kind of point out the other use for this lovely little foot and as you can see different widths of elastic would fit in quite nicely there wouldn't they so for the little project um if you wanted a little something to have a play with i've done these i showed you before these little easter cards um you could equally do it as bunting and i had some strips knocking around so i've just flipped and stitched and then i've just added ribbons and tapes and just kind of messed around and experimented and I've done I did some pink a pink strip and a yellow strip and then I've got my easter egg shape I didn't do you a template because I think you'll probably be able to find one of those somewhere and then I can just go along cutting out as many of those as I can out of there and then once I've cut my shape I've then going to just quickly zigzag around it I've got my zigzag setting on three for the width and uh, 0.7 so it's quite a close but not a complete satin stitch and I'm just going on to let me a little bit closer for you there we go and I'm just going to go all the way around onto it. This is just felt, just normal white felt, so you can use any colour felt. So as I say, you can use this for bunting if you want, because it's going to have enough oomph. You this month um hopefully that has given you some inspiration and ideas and help like i said before any questions any queries please do pop them into the comments below i think you need to subscribe before you can do that um but if you can give a little thumbs up if this is the kind of thing that you're enjoying or if there's something in particular you want me to cover please do put something in the comments again trying to uh go through various things and I have got quite a long list as you can imagine um, but as I say I hope that you found this useful and I'll see you again next month